Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Quantum Leap Futures Morning Leap Session. My name is Doug McKay. I'm the founder of Quantum Leap Futures. Each morning we get together in these live go-to sessions to take a look at the market macro to micro, take a look at the structure of the market, and then we drill down to our trade levels, our targets, and our hypotheses. We do create multiple hypotheses. Uh, we do not know what the market is going to do. We can only create scenarios, hypos, a, uh, a trade plan based on you know, who's in control, the buyers or the sellers. So we create two main hypotheses, hypo one and hypo two, and then we create two alternative, hypo three and hypo four. And hypo three and hypo four generally are uh, trend day scenarios, what we expect the market to do when one side takes complete control and we go into a trend. Friday was a very good example of a trend day. Uh, and why we have those hypo threes and hypo fours. But our main two hypos is what we anticipate. Uh, and sometimes like yesterday, they are equally weighted because we're looking at a balancing day. We just don't know if the high is going to be put in first or the low is going to be put in first. And then we balance out. So let's get uh, to it right away. But before I do that, Please read through the disclaimer. Nobody at Quantum Leap is a certified trading advisor. We are retail traders operating within a self-organized learning environment. Past performance is not indicative of the future results in any trades that you see in Quantum Leap. Are for education purposes only. Please trade your own due diligence, your own trade plan, and your own risk metrics. <clears throat> so taking a look at yesterday, yesterday our main hypothesis was a, a rotational day with equal weight on uh, – you know, hypo one and hypo two. But hypo one was open auction out of range. A move down into the upper distribution of the prior day and then moving down somewhere between 80, 75, and 75 uh, and a quarter. We were looking for responsive buyers to base it and then rotate us up and chop between 28.05 and 27.85. Hypo two was what we got, which was an open auction out of range, push up into the 2800s, fail to hold the 2800s and somewhere between the 2800 and the 2805 and a quarter, which was our overnight high, find responsive sellers and rotate us down into the uh, upper distribution of the prior day, chop in here and then somewhere between 80 and 75 basing and uh, and basically chopping between the 85 and the uh, 2805. We didn't quite get down to our 270875. They stepped in a little bit early uh, at our target, which was the 2784 and a quarter. We uh, came down to 8375, came up and basically did the chop we were expecting and then tried to push down and failed, had a failed auction, did not get below the 28, uh, 2783.75, and the buyers stepped in on the close, pushing us up, trying to get back uh, outside and hold and into the 2800s, and then we failed, and we came right back down into balance. And look at that, uh, that uh, VPOC, the VPOC overlaid on top of the Friday session, and we basically accepted that value uh, at the end of the uh, day. So with this, we were looking for uh, a continuation in the Globex. Let's take a look at what uh, we saw in the Globex. In the Globex, they opened right in that uh, balance around that VPOC and basically went sideways, you know, basically the whole night through the Asian session and then the European session came in and they just sort of grinded it, grinded it up to 96 and failed twice there. And they came back down into this balance and then we got the news. Uh, CPI got a beautiful spike. Uh, I'll... I won't get into this, but this is a beautiful FUBAR, Mr. Sneaky Tech Gap. Uh, FUBAR, uh, twice, the value, uh, twice the volume, and then the inside bar, and the rotation back to uh, the uh, technical gap fill, and then balance out from there. So right now, uh, we did receive the news. Let's uh, take a look at the news. Uh, inventory is pretty much 95% net long. Uh, and, uh, you know, tested back into, didn't quite get to the uh, the Globex high from uh, Sunday night, 
at 28.05 and a quarter, but we uh, came within a tick to it, and then we're back down, chopping around that 98. Taking a look at the news, you can see that uh, the retail sales was a beat. Uh, of course, CPI, uh, CPI was uh, as anticipated. Core CPI index was a beat, and uh, index NSA was uh, was a beat as well. So nice little beat. That's what gave us a little spike, but uh, some uh, opposing force stepped in and brought us back right into balance. We have Red Book coming out in one minute, month over month, year uh, year over year. At 10:15, we've got the Bank of Canada uh, Pelos speaking. Uh, I don't know if that'll move the market, but something to uh, Keep an eye out. And then at 11 o'clock, we've got Cleveland CPI, 11.30, four-week bill auction, and 30-year uh, bond auction at 1 o'clock. And then API crude at uh, uh, 3.30. Uh, I'm sorry, 4.30. Um, not a lot of scheduled uh, news other than what we had today for the CPI. So... Each morning, I like to start my day with a basic candlestick chart, and I'll probably lose some of you right here, but I implore you, I do this for a reason. Uh, it's something that I will do until my end of my trading days. I start with a monthly. I personally use a 9 EMA and a 20 SMA on all my charts. What I'm looking for is I'm looking at, in each time frame from the monthly down where are we in terms of the trend do we have good slope and separation is price paralleling nine nicely you can see on the monthly our trend is very much intact we did violate the one time framing we had 14 months of one time framing up february challenged the trend by dipping below the nine ema and uh, and violating the one time framing uh, that we had one time framing is higher lows higher lows 14 months of that something we haven't seen for a very very long time and then we took it back so far in february and in march and we're back to the trend which is currently up going to the uh the uh weekly we Broke down below the 9 and the 20. There was a possibility of a trend change, but they took it right back. Then we had these inside weeks. And what are we? We're right back above the 9 and the 20, and we're getting slope and separation. The trend is continuing. Going to the daily, same thing. We had those, uh, those breakdown days, dipped down into the 2500s, and then they took it back, consolidation. And now we're starting to get, oops, starting to get some slope and separation and the trend is intact on the daily. And it doesn't even get challenged until we get back down into the 2758 area. So this was the normal pullback for the longer time frame trend. Going to the intraday, the four hour, you can see that uh, we're holding the trend. We've got good slope and separation, a little bit of a uh, lack of slope and separation, but the trend is still intact. I would be watching the uh, the 2775, 75 area. Uh, there's a couple of reasons why to watch that area. Uh, it was one of our uh, trade areas yesterday. Going to the 30 minute. You can see that we basically have gone into consolidation and uh, we came down and challenged the, uh, the trend against the 20 and then we popped and uh, currently uh, back in the upward uh, the trend mode. I'm just going to take it down one more level, this time to the 15 level. And you can see that uh, we do have a possible FUBAR Mr. Sneaky happening on the 15-minute level. And a move back to close that technical gap will bring us back down to 27.95.75. <clears throat> this is not a completed pattern, but uh, just keep in uh, mind that this might likely come back and uh, and challenge this to close the technical gap against the 9 and possibly even against the 20. So taking a look at the, uh, the context, the big picture uh, structure, And again, just a little bit of context, we had a gap up, we went and we made this beautiful move up into new all-time highs. Now, 
Again, I keep talking about this. We have an unequalized high against the Globex all-time high and the RTH all-time high. Historically, that is a, rare, a very rare occurrence that stays open. And uh, why I've been telling everybody to, okay, don't get your short, uh, you know, bias on, you know, even with this big move down, I was saying we still have an unequalized high. And we've got a lot of repair work above after this, uh, this failure. So we come up, we put in the unequal highs, the Globex all-time high in the June contract is 28.83 and a quarter. You might even want to mark down in your uh, in, in your journal the all-time high in the uh, March contract, which was 28.78.50. Just adjust the current ones by the five points of the spread between the two contracts. Um, so the all-time high in the Globex, the actual all-time high, is 28.83 and a quarter. The all-time high in the RTH session is the 28.80 and a quarter that you see here. So this is an unequalized high, and I'm still expecting those to get repaired at some time. So we come down, we test down into the 2500s, then they bring it back up into balance. We create this balance zone, this uh, micro composite uh, value area high, 275475 uh, and 263975 for the low. And we chop in right here, chop in here, and you know, we put a uh, micro composite VPOC at 27.19 and a quarter, the most traded price in this uh, this area in this time frame, and then just before the breakout, we accept value higher at the 27.83, the three-day micro composite. Then we gap up, break out of the balance, go into price discovery. We come up, and currently right now we're coming up into this former balance be at uh, the 28.09.50. Our two-day microcomposite VPOC, the two-day price acceptance at 27.89.50. We're currently above that, and uh, you know we dip back into the uh, 2800s in the Globex again, uh, putting in a weak high uh, between the Sunday Globex high at 28.05 and a quarter, and our overnight high so far today 28.05. That creates a weak high. Um, we're going to be opening in the upper wick of the yesterday's uh, uh, session, so we could uh, spend some time in this wick, uh, you know, chopping around the uh, 98.50. If we get below the 95, remember that 95 level that closes the uh, the technical gap on the 15-minute Fubar Mr. Sneaky Tech Gap. Uh, I'm not going to try to explain what that means. It's a, a trade setup of mine, but it's uh, my favorite trade setup. And uh, we have the CLVN here at the 95, which is also the technical gap. If we get below that, we're looking for a push down into the 89.75 and, uh, and findings, uh, seeing if we can find buyers. If we don't hold the 85.75, we could pop back down into that 76.75 area. The 75, remember I was talking about that 75 area just uh, a few minutes earlier which would challenge the, uh, the trend on the daily. And then if we get below that, we could see it move back into this gap zone again and possibly come down and test that uh, uh, value area high from the micro composite down up to 54. But the overall trend is up. Okay, if we hold the 95, 95 is going to be our over underline. If we hold the 95, I'm actually going to move the over underline to the LVN from overnight, which was at 91 and a quarter, I believe. The idea is that we'll uh, we'll base here some more and continue the auction up into the 2805 week high that we created and push up into the 2809 and a quarter, which is uh, where we accepted value. Uh, prior on the way up and continue our move up. 1850 above us uh, still remains our key line in the sand above. Above that, uh, clear target into the 2831.75 and the continuation up towards the all time highs and the equalization of that Globex all time high and uh, RTH all time high. So, Going to the uh, the overnight, and we can start moving our levels over again. Uh, oh, we created a new uh, LVN, so I, I am going to use that 95 now, then as my over underline. 
So it's just underneath the uh, the value. This is a very valid value area uh, today. So this is not a bad spot to uh, to put the uh, over underline because if we do get below that, uh, I'm looking for a uh, possible trip in through value and down to that uh, overnight low down at 86 uh, and a quarter, I believe, right? 86 and a quarter. So our overnight low, 86 and a quarter, our overnight high, we put in, which has created a weak high at that 28.05, uh, 05 and a quarter. Um, we were creating a uh, multiple distribution. Uh, I was going to use this 91.50 uh, as my overline, underline, but because we created an LVN here at the 96, and I've got the uh, CLVN and the uh, the value area high, I'm going to use this as my over underline. I could actually call it a warning line for the over under. Oops. Um, but there is a trade there, so I'm going to. What am I trying to do? Get to here. Yes. Over under. Okay. And then below there, we've got a target at the 92.50. I'm going to move it to 92 and a quarter because that's, uh, I'm sorry, 92 because that is the VWAP. And then the trade area, which was going to be our over underline, is going to be 91 and a quarter. Trade areas are targets and entries. Targets are targets. So if we're coming down and I'm, I'm in a trade and I'm going to be looking to scale uh, down at the trade level, but I might also enter into the trade and add on to it. Uh, you know, these are the areas that I'm looking to do business. Uh, call them trade areas, stocking zones, whatever you want to call them. Um, and then we have another LVN down here. We already got, and then the overnight low. So basically, uh, those are my levels. I do have to put in the daily ATR upside and downside target. So off of the low overnight of 27.86 and a quarter, our 20 period full session daily average to range is running at 46 and a quarter. Still way up there. So our upside daily ATR target is up at 2832.50. That moves up. And off of the high overnight of, well, that's just going to be adjusted. Oh, no, well, 2805 minus the 46 and a quarter. Our downside daily ATR target is 2758.75. Uh, why do I look at this? I watch this because it'll give me an idea of range expansion and where to, you know, the, the ranges are pretty large right now. So these haven't been as effective as guides to give us a clue when we go into trend because we're probably usually already in trend because of the, you know, the size of the average to range. But generally, I'm using those to identify possibilities of when we go into hypo 3 and hypo 4. So these are all my levels. Let's talk about the uh, hypos. We're going to be opening up just inside of range, just outside of value. So uh, inventory is you know about 95% net long and time and value from yesterday, but the overall trend is up. So my hypos are generally going to be the same as they were yesterday. Okay, as I'm looking at some more balancing today, uh, not I'm looking at maybe 15 to 20 point range, and uh, it's I don't know whether or not the move will be to the upside or the downside first. So when I say they have equal weight, 50-50, it means that hypo 1 and hypo 2 is basically a mirror image of each other. So hypo 1, open auction, out of, uh, out of uh, value, in range, move down, responsive selling uh, down into the 89, test the week open, push down into the 83 area, and I'm looking for a base here, maybe a poke below down to the 8075, but between 8375 and 8075, looking for that base again and for them to continue the auction up 
and move our way and poke into the 2800s and chop around between the 2809 and the 2795 area. Basically, very similar to yesterday. Uh, and hypo two, similar to yesterday, an open auction out of range. I'm uh, sorry, in range, out of value, and I poke up into the 2505, break the weak high, push up into the 2809, and then find responsive buy, uh, sellers and rotate us down into the distribution zone from yesterday and chop between the 85 and the 2805. Those are almost identical to my hypotheses uh, from yesterday. And then hypo three will be an open test drive, a move down, uh, failure to take out the overnight low, find buyers rather quickly, move us up into the 2809 area, chop in this area, and then get continuation with the target up here in the uh, 20, uh, 8, 2750. Our key line in the sand is going to be that 1850. And that's uh, going to be an important level. If we get above that, I'm going to get, I'm going to put uh, the pedal to the metal on the uh, on the long biased uh, key line in the sand. And just let me just check for the other levels I needed in this area. So the 18, no, that's everything I need pretty much. Okay, so hypo three, open test drive, failure to take out the overnight low, come down, poke into value, but buyers early come up to the 2805 to 2809, chop, base there, get the continuation, push up into the 18, chop, and, uh, and break above, and come up into the 27 as a trend day, and... Uh, and pushing us up. Uh, hypo four is going to be a breakdown day, uh, open auction, in range, out of value, a push up, either a false breakout or a failure to break out, find sellers early, come down into the 95, chop at the 95, fail, come down through to the range low from yesterday, chop between the 83 and the 8075, and then fail and come down into those TPOs that we left uh, from Friday. There's one at 75 and a quarter, one at 69 and a quarter, and one at 6375, and come down towards the 2760, and then start basing there and chopping and closing somewhere in the uh, 60s or the 70s. So those are my four main hypotheses. Again, the three and four are alternative. We have been seeing the alternative hypos, though, play out more regularly with this volatility. So um, just keep an eye on, you know, the uh, the uh, 09 area. If we blow through that, start looking at hypo three and move up into that 2818. Taking a quick look at gold. Nothing changes in gold. All the levels remain the same. We're still in this chop. We've got the longer time frame micro composite VPOC at the 22 area. We've got the shorter time frame at the 19. We continue to chop here. We did come down and test that 14 level. Uh, in the Globex and bounce very strong off the news. And now we're coming up into that upper level, which is that uh, 2950 area. And you can see that the value area high and the CLVN are now in line with each other. So any breakout on that, look for the pop to the 31, 32 level, base there and push up into the 39. Anything above 39, I'd be looking for a trip to the upper dip, uh, other side of the distribution up at the 49. And, of course, the major target above is still where we tried to hold value up at 1356.50. So more chop, but the areas for breakouts on gold you want at 29.50 or down at 14. Otherwise, look for them to continue to uh, mature this distribution zone in gold. That's going to complete our pre-market session. As always, trade well, trade safe, and we'll catch you on the flip side.